McManus, good morning. Good morning. Last time I talked to you, it was the first Friday in March. Anything happened since then? Things are a little different. <laughs> <laughs> well, the good thing is the weather's better. Yes. Yeah, that's about the only thing it seems like. Uh, our world has changed, hasn't it? Is, it? it has changed forever. Really is amazing that you bring that up. It's been two months since you and I sat down like this, and uh, the world is completely different. In 60 days, uh, we have gone from what we knew as normal to what we're trying to figure out is the new normal. Correct. So you've got uh, situations here with uh, safer at home and with social distancing, as the term is being used now, that getting there was quite a uh, discussion as to how are you going to get together as a group to run the city business as far as the council is concerned. Um, yeah, that was very interesting because um, most of the cities, um, you know, everything is virtual. And the Common Council made a decision that we would have... Um, the city needs to get back to work. Well, realistically, the city has been working because we made that decision on a virtual meeting. You know what I mean? So it's like we were taking care of the city's business. But many of them felt that, that we should be, um, you know, there in uh, public. And so that went to an 8-2 vote back up. And then since then, we had one council meeting and... Um, there were four council members present. Obviously, when they are there, social distancing. So even if all 10 would come in, we would all, you know, it's a big council chamber. So we can get, you know, as much as 10 feet apart if we really need to. Um, and, you know, business to, business took place. All of our committee meetings and, and whatnot can still take place um, virtually. Um, people have been using Zoom and WebEx and those are... Uh, um, those are great platforms to to get the business done. So um, it, it's it's definitely different. I will tell you this: it's definitely different conducting a virtual meeting as opposed to a meeting where everybody is there. Because a lot of times you can read, you know, when you're in there and in, in session, you can read body language. You can see where people are at. You see the nods, and I'm conducting the meeting, so I've got to watch this, you know, computer screen to see when the the next person wants to to speak you know they'll wave their hand or something like that so it's a little bit different but business still got done um last week's uh, council meeting was two hours long and that's pretty average talking with mayor bob mcmanus you can too live here on wdlb this uh, first of may 384-2191 384-2191 i always say when we're on here because we're also uh, on video at Marshfield Media Access that things may change by the time you <laughs> see this. And I'm thinking things may change by the time we leave the door here from time to time, the way the world has been moving. Now, when you say we're open, does that mean all departments or were you just talking about the council or what were you? Well, decision the council, makers? City Hall, in essence, is, you know, you really can't go in there. Um, but it's still working. All the departments are still working. Police, fire, streets, um, administration, development services, everyone is still working. Um, so, and, and many of the folks are working virtually. And for the folks that have to have that contact, you know, when you walk, when you go, when you go into the back door or, or into the back offices or whatever, normally everybody keeps their office door open. Now they're all closed. So, People are, are really taking everything very seriously, and, you know, it's cleaned uh, all the time. And so, but all the work is still taking place because, you, you know, streets still have to be taken care of. Police still need to police. Fire still needs to fire. Um, wastewater still needs to wastewater. You know, all these well, different so. departments, are right? Uh, they all still need to function. Um, so, so far, it's gone, um, it, it's gone pretty well. The uh, you talked about streets. There is visible construction things going on around the city that makes it feel a little bit normal anyway in that respect. So the city is operating. Um, you become the essentials, so to speak. And that that term is somewhat reviled in some circles because that would indicate that other people are not. Uh, but that's how it breaks down under our current rules here today. But if city people, if citizens want to take business and take care of business with city departments, 
Uh, what's the best way to do that? Um, you they could go in. in. They could call in. Uh, there's also still um, early voting going on for the May uh, 12th election. That That is taking place inside the council chamber. So th the best thing to do is to call or email whatever you're doing. So you can you can be seen by appointment. Um, so that is all still taking place. Everybody need to be masked up? Um, we don't have that. If people want to be masked, they certainly can. Um, that is not a requirement um, uh, right now. Um, so but if people want to take that precaution, they certainly can. Well, the other thing, uh, meetings on Zoom is uh, a new... It's hard. You can read body language when you're there, as you said, and you can hear audible sighs from time to time. It's, right. it's difficult when everybody's on mute, you know, right. <laughs> whether you're reading the situation correctly or not. So there's those awkward pauses from time to time or two people talking at the same time or those kind of things that you kind of have to get used to in order to uh, keep, in your case, uh, rules of order as to who gets to go first and who says what and follows up with what right it's very funny because as as an as an alderman is speaking as they start rounding it up i could just see the little um you know because there are so many people on i think our How last many boxes meeting, are you 25 looking at? and it's on a, on a screen and so you see this little hand waving and then you got to figure out who it is and then they're going to go next and you know and then what's interesting is a couple of the aldermen had issues with their phone line going out or you know they're on cellular maybe at their place so they're it disconnects and so they put a little sign uh, up that says i'm disconnected it's it just you know not stuff you normally have to have to uh, as see. a citizen uh, because this is all being done virtually can we tap in and watch this or is it oh absolutely it's on, absolutely it's on facebook live it's on channel uh, 990 all live. It's still the absolutely in citizens for public comment. If they want to come in, they just need to call the day before. They can actually citizens can actually come into the council chamber and do their public comment there, or they can send a letter or an email to somebody that can read it during that time. Or there's also during the public uh, comment period, um, they can call in by telephone and make their own statement, so they could still do that. What's interesting about that is, for some reason, there's a delay between, there's a 30-second delay between us saying that public comment is open and then that getting to the public. So you actually have to wait about a minute and a half. And so <laughs> you've just got a lot of member, you know, 25 people that you see on the screen and we're waiting, so it's quiet. And then you, you wait and, okay, nobody's called in. All right, we'll close public comment and we'll move on. The virtual world it's is a virtual met world. latency, they call it, you Absolutely. know, between the times that... Well, and you just wonder how this is going to change the world, because if this if this could take place now, you know, education is taking place virtually. That's going to be a big question in the future for, for, the, for the higher education. Um, I believe that, 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 that kids, you know, elementary and middle school and high school still need to be in there. But, you know, you really start looking at some of those universities and colleges could get very, very pricey. And if you've got if you've got the ability to give people to pass people virtually, th that's certainly going to come up for a discussion. A lot of things are a lot of people that are that can do their job functionally at home. Um, you know, businesses can get bigger and bigger and not necessarily have the overhead of a of a big office building or something like that. So I think down the road, there's going to be, there will be changes to the way things are done. Um, it'll have to get to an efficiency thing. Cause I don't know if you can really work eight hours at home when you've got, you know, Skippy, your dog over here, who's got to go outside or something like that. I don't know how that would work long term, but there are industries that do it. So it'll be interesting to see everything that takes place out of this. And I'm just wondering if there's going to be industries that are, um, created because of this. I wouldn't be surprised if that happened as well. And that's the thing about now the shifting of the world as we knew from industrial society to a technical society and now within that technical society, what are the jobs that are going to be open now? Creating what? Uh, as far you know, we talked about in the city delivering food. There's, there hasn't been anyone or at least uh, 
franchise, you know, that has done that. And suddenly that's become something that is of need. And if there's enough to be made, money to be made there with delivery services, they will come about. Absolutely. And you mentioned distance. We've called it distance learning for decades now, Mm -hmm. where people have done that kind of thing. Even in the local branches of technical schools, they have one teacher, and then the uh, people in campuses all the way from Phillips on across the northern part of the state can tap in on that and talk back and forth and be a part of the virtual class. That's been going on for a long time, so I guess they may be swinging more to that. Uh, in different ways, as in from home. Absolutely. I mean, there was, a, you know, there was a lot of those online universities where somebody could get an advanced degree and 80% of the work done was virtually, and then they would come in every now and then. But, of course, they would have access to their professor, and what you found is those those degrees were, you could get just a lot of different types of degrees with that, same as if you went to a, a brick-and-mortar establishment. Um, just a lot more expensive. So now with this, you just wonder what's going to happen to those college, um, the cost, if they don't necessarily have to have all of the other costs that go in there. You would think that that would come down, but we'll have to wait and see how that uh, how that pans out. That's a long game there as that far is. as what the brick and mortar of the university in Marshfield is going to mean in the long term, correct. under the current changes that are being made. Correct. We will see. You can talk to Mayor Bob McManus here, 384-2191, 384-2191. We're live on WDLB this uh, 1st of May already, as in some ways it's crawling along, and in other ways it's like, holy mokes, it's the 1st of May already. <laughs> you know, it is, but I'm, I'm just seeing with, um, it, it's very, very interesting as I, um, you know, there's a group of, I think, 23 of us that talk twice a week. Uh, you know, myself, the police chief, the fire chief, city administrator, uh, two people from uh, the, the clinic, uh, the uh, Wood County Health. I mean, all, you know, the school district, Columbus. Has that been instituted since this? Since then, yeah. Well, we started this about six weeks ago, I believe, in preparation, because at that time, the, the every all everything was the surge. The surge, the surge, the surge. So at, at that time, I remember when we had the first meeting. This was very interesting. It was, I believe, the uh, the uh, myself, Steve Barg, the, uh, Steve Barg, the city administrator, the police chief, Rick Grams of the fire chief, Scott Owen, um, Jay Schrader from the clinic, um, Ashley Winch from the United Way, and Scott Larson from Mackey. We were at the very first meeting, and it was on a Sunday evening. We we thought, okay, this is, and there wasn't there was not anything yet really going on. We were in that meeting. It was a Sunday afternoon. It was about five thirty, and we were talking about, okay, we've got to be prepared for this. So, and since that time, we met three times, and then it's become kind of a a task force of information. So, and a lot of great things have come from this, but it was very interesting. That night at about 6.30, I received a, um, I received a text from Donna Rosar at, at the county, um, and she said that there will be doing a press release. We have our first case of COVID in Wood County. And it was interesting because when I got the text, everybody else was getting texts as well. And we all just sat there for two minutes like, wow, it's it's here. Now, the issue is uh, in Wood County, there have been two, um, and both have since recovered. So right now in Wood County, there is none. You're seeing the, you're seeing the numbers rise on a daily basis, which, um, you know, it's, it's very unfortunate with what our, our media is doing with this because every time somebody... Um, a, a new case it, it's just it's fear mongering and we do need to know the information that's it but what's interesting is uh, there are record numbers right now um, but the testing has gone from about 1500 a day to 3200 a day so what the percentage you're looking for is what is the infection rate and the infection rate is still covering around 
10%. That's not going up or down, even with the more testing where you'd have an issue. And so this is the problem, I think, that that, that I have, and I think a lot of people are, are just like me and the public is. Y'all have so many different numbers going around. Could somebody just start shooting straight with us? Because it's, it, I'm telling you, the public is tired of this. They're really tired. I'm tired of it. And I, I will tell you, I will talk about this um, in a little bit. Uh, a little bit, the Rice Lake Common Council. I'm, I'm shocked at what they did. I mean, it is, I'm shocked. The behavior is completely irresponsible. Because I think people, there's there's two camps right now, which, you know, before there was just two camps politically. You were either a Republican or Democrat. And it got so bad that, you know, no matter what one person said, if you weren't in that club, then you know, then you're wrong. So now the two camps are, there are some people that are, are frightened by this and that are listening to, to the, you know, the statistics that we get, the state of Wisconsin, uh, the department of health services has a great, I mean, the information that they have is down to the T on how many hospitalizations they've had. I mean, it looks like on average, we're getting about 25 to 30 new hospitalizations a day. Our medical system can handle that. That's not here in, that's not here area, that's throughout the state. Um, so you've got people that are very concerned about this, that understand the safer at home order, although we really don't like it. It's there and it's in place, not a lot you can do about it. And, and that are also, you know, they'll wear the mask, they're in precaution, they feel that they could be a, that the, even though they might be healthy, they might carry it. And so they're very protective. There's that group of people. And then there's these other group of folks that are like, this is overblown. Why aren't businesses just opening up? And, and again, we're down to the two camps. We can't just have a civil conversation anymore where two people can... This is your point of view. I respect it. I don't share it, but I respect it. I, it was very interesting. I was in the other day in a festival, and um, I'm, I'm, I am I'm forgot what department I was in or what aisle. And this guy comes up to me, and he's pretty, he's, he's upset. And he's like, why aren't you opening up the city? And I expressed to him that a mayor or a common council can't go against a safer at home order. And, and I expressed to him, if you have an issue with that, and because I would love it if everything could open up, but I understand that there's a safer and, and as a mayor, you can't pick and choose the laws that you enforce. You can't. The police department cannot pick and choose the laws that they enforce. So right now we're under a safer at home order. The person that makes this decision is the governor. So I, I was kept helping this person with the fact of call the governor well, I'm calling you, I'm talking to you. I can't make that decision. We talked for about 10 minutes. And, and um, because if people want to talk, I'll always talk. And he just kept going on to, you know, we should do this. People are suffering. Believe me, I know people are suffering. It, it's why I, I instituted and came up with the idea of the business grant. I'm very clear that people are suffering. The problem is the governor is the one that makes the decision. And until they get a back to work situation, you got to call the governor. So I'm having this nice conversation with this fella. And of course, then somebody comes around the corner with a mask. And this person, while I'm talking with this other person, is asking me why I and him are not in a mask. So I, I said, you know what? The two of you need to talk this out because those are the two sides. And. Uh, it is very, very difficult to, because I acknowledge both sides and my personal feelings may be different than what needs to be enforced. Right now, the governor's safer at home order is what is in effect. So it has to be followed. Can you imagine, just imagine this, Jeff, if, if a, a mayor or common council was so irresponsible that they said, look, we're not going to honor what the governor says. So you go on ahead and open your business. And I want to say right now, I'm not saying this is happening in Marshfield. I'm giving an example. I don't want anybody to say, hey, the mayor said open up. That is not what I'm saying. 
And then somebody went into a business, contracted uh, the COVID virus, and ultimately died. That business owner could be sued because they opened up their business when there was a safer at home order that said no, even though the person going into wherever, maybe getting their hair done or going into a restaurant, made their own decision to go into that. So by doing that before the safer at home order is lifted, puts every one of those businesses at risk. People don't think along those lines. People just say, well, let's just get it open, which is why I say send your, you know, you see this a lot on Facebook and social media. People are mad and they're going to go to this city and they're going to have a, a rally, which is fine to do. You have a right to do those things, but then go to the right place. Because if you're not getting your voice heard to the right person, then it's not helping you. So I'm certainly saying if you have that issue and whatnot, you know what, then have your voice heard. Absolutely. But get to the right person. Talking with Mayor Bob McManus here this uh, first day of May, you can too, live on WDLB, 384-2191, 384-2191. You may be watching us on video in the days to come at Marshall Media Access, channel 989 on your Spectrum uh, digital cable tier here. Um, there's so many things in that, and there's always thousands of details. Safer at home is not a law. It's an order. It's an order. It's an order that you, and what is an obligation to follow that? Can there be selective enforcement as far as the departments are concerned? Racine County, uh, the sheriff said, I'm not going to enforce this. If they want to open, I'm not going to come in and arrest them. It's not a, how can I arrest? It's not a law. It's just an order. Well, you know, all this semantics of how this is, it's what just, is it? I, I don't know if you could quantify irresponsible any better than that. Um, Colby had it where they said they weren't going to enforce it. So the question is, how many businesses in Racine County and Colby, since those things have have been taken place, have opened up? And the answer is zero. Because the businesses understand the liability of it. And that's the part that's so... But because what this does is this fuels people's, you know, right, right now I, and I get it. I'm feeling it. It, it fuels people's anxieties and, and there, and people are hearing so many different, well, maybe you could open, maybe you can't, maybe you should, but then what business is going to open right now? Um, in, 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 uh, Rice Lake, they say, okay, we're going to, um, we've officially said we can open. Okay, good. What's your reopening strategy? Well, that we don't have. We're going to tell the police and the fire department, and the police have already said they're not going to give up on their enforcement because the police have to be responsible, as does the fire department. So, so what, the, what their counsel said is, yeah, we can open up, but we don't have a plan. Does that sound responsible to you, Jeff? Not under the well, no, I mean, situation that the, we have where you could get sued or does it, you could does get it licenses. Sound responsible to say, let's open up and you have no plan in place. Yeah, but you see, the, backing out here, the bigger picture is yep. you. Uh, people th view it as you got this boogeyman virus. You mentioned that there's no ca cases in Wood County. There's right. no cases in Price County. There's no cases in, and everybody says, I, I'm, we're, we're okay. We're okay with this. We got nothing to worry about here. And then you have the other side, which is saying uh, there's real economic. The, the thing you can see, the tangible, is people going out of business and people going bankrupt. Right. So you have the real against the boogeyman virus, and you see people that are doing what you're calling irresponsible because they don't see it. They're not. It's not something you can touch, feel, and see. But the the hardship you can. And so they're saying, look, I'm not going to ruin these people's lives for they, something that may or may not exist. But they are. They're doing it by the way of they're saying, okay, we're open up. But those businesses don't want to risk opening up. And that leads to the confusion and the angst. 
in my, if I, I mean, the way I think personally, I'll take off my mayor hat for a second, I can see things opening up. Um, and then the people that do have fear of this um, stay home. I mean, if you, you know what I mean? If you, if you're fearful or if you have an underlying medical condition or something like that, or you get sick easy, oh my gosh, even when they do list it, lift this. And when we do get back to some kind of normal, you should still be, if you have that issue, you should still be careful and maybe not go to those places, big football games and big stadiums and stuff like that. You, know, you look what happened to Brown County. Did Have you seen the outbreak there? Over 200 cases in a week? That's how quick this thing goes. So, And, at the and same, then for the other people that want to take the risk, that goes, look, I'm relatively healthy, and I go on, so I'm going to go out to the business, or I'm going to go out to the... Uh, I'm going to go out to the... Um, to the restaurant and I'll, you know, I'll stay away from people and I'll take the risk. Okay. That's fine. That's part of our constitutional right of, for people to take on that personal responsibility. So for me personally, I could see this being different, which is why I send a lot of information and I call the governor's office quite a bit because that's the person that has to get this lifted. You can't be selective on what, let me ask you this. What what would happen if you said um, you weren't going to enforce the legal drinking age in a bar? People could just go get whatever. And then people have to know, well, realistically, the bigger thing is I can't drink before I'm 21. Um, could that cause a problem? And the answer is, of course it could. Because, so this is why in law enforcement, and and you, you can't you don't have that variable this although this is not a law it is an order and this is why i wish they would because you're right here in wood county right now we have none marathon county i think has 17 or 18. we're practicing good social distancing and everything else and believe me i'm aware of the difficulties for people we basically closed our economy now for over 40 days. And this is part of the media's problem, too. It, I will tell you, it disgusts me. The media goes on and goes, can you believe that there's this many people on unemployment? Well, <laughs> you just shut the entire country down. Are you shocked that the employment rate is this high? It, it just makes no sense. Report the information, but do we really have to report it with an angle? That's the part. And what thing is, what it, my concern is, I'm not getting the fact that all the powers that be are really caring about the people because they don't see them at the supermarket like I do. They don't get the calls from businesses crying on the phone with me. And I'm very empathetic to it that I do. I have to deal with these people. And I believe me, I understand the hardship that they're going through. And I do not think it's fair. I don't. But at the same time, it's an order. And so this is why if, if, you, um, if you're mad about something, you've, you've got to go to the person that, that can change it. And I think they do need to start working on a, on a thing because here's the other thing. This was crazy that our folks at the state did this. Closed parks or, or, and lakes and blah, 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 blah. But opened up places that rent kayaks and stuff like that so you could be open however they're not going to be able to take the, it it's illegal for you to go to the different places to use that stuff that makes no sense people didn't think it through and so this is what the general public gets very frustrated with and i'm in a hundred percent agreement with the public i think the powers that be need to stop playing this game and be responsible and get what's done right for the people. Mayor Bob McManus, my guest here this first Friday uh, in the first day of May. Uh, you mentioned uh, about the hardships that are going on and people are talking to you. You've done some things locally. We'll talk about that coming up here after the break. You can call us, 384-2191, 384-2191. We'll talk about what the city of Marshfield has done over and above what state and federal people have done. <laughs> Thank you. 
Mother's Day memories are still made at the Belvedere Supper Club, and it's easy when you let the Belvedere do all the prep. Mother's Day carryout specials include roast turkey, honey glazed ham, German franks, and sauerkraut, served with mashed potato, homemade stuffing, and vegetable. Serving from 11 to 2.30 and all for just $11.97. Of course, the Belvedere Supper Club is temporarily closed due to the coronavirus, but it's still a good idea to make plans for celebrating your next birthday or anniversary. After all, this pandemic will end, and Pat and Dale will keep you informed when they will be open to the public again. Belvedere Supper Club also provides carryouts on Friday Night Fish Fry from 4 to 8 p.m. Dale and Pat look forward to serving future guests, to enjoy a good meal, and to make lasting friendships and memories. Again, Mother's Day carryout specials, Sunday the 10th from 11 to 2.30. To place your order, call them at 387-4161 and for your next delicious carryout meal or meals, or visit their website at belvederesupperclub.net. Drive safely, Wisconsin. Highway workers are out on the road. They do it to better serve you. And just like you, they want to get home safely at the end of a hard day's work. When driving, all of us have a chance to set the right example. Be patient. Put down the phone. Never text and drive. Slow down and move over if possible to give workers a little extra room. Work zone safety. It's everyone's responsibility. Sponsored by the Wisconsin DOT. Here on AM 1450 WDLB's Insight program for this first Friday in May, first day of May, talking with Mayor Bob McManus. Uh, we were talking here uh, on the radio about the commercial that ran uh, for the DOT that construction is out. Of course, on social media, people have a good laugh saying, well, while everybody's inside, why don't we do all the road construction? <laughs> it, and talking with you over the years, it doesn't happen that way. You don't just have people show up at the city garage that morning and say, here's what we should do today. Right. <laughs> you right. know what we should do? We should do that asphalt overlay on that street that we were looking at. Okay, right. go get some tar and we'll go out there and <laughs> run down to Menards. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't work that way. These are in the plans for years and yeah. capital improvements and budgets and things on how this is going to happen. It doesn't just, uh, this is what we're going to do today, tear up this road. So it's all in good fun, but I don't, sometimes people don't understand how the wheels, uh, the ship turns real slow. You know, the wheels turn slow in these things. Um, well, you know, one thing with that that's, that I'm very proud of is when I, I, I wanted to get better communication out to the public on, on the road work that's being done because road work is very important to a lot, a lot of people. And so um, as the city developed a website and we got it within the first six months. Um, so you can go to the city and you could actually see the three-year plan of what streets are going to be done, the funding source. Um, is it going to be a mill in place or is it going to be a full reconstruction? You could see the city's entire three-year plan right there. Um, so that's very helpful. It, 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 it helps It helps hold the city accountable because I asked why it wasn't done before. And it's like, well, if you put it out there, then people are going to get, you know, they'll kind of hold you accountable to it. And it's like, that's why we want to do it. Because you know what I was hearing from citizens is that you know they said they've been saying that they've going to do this street now for four years and something would happen and would get pushed back or whatever well this is a, an accountability thing so people can see that you're exactly right they don't just show up Monday morning and go okay let's let's get our shovel and our tractors and let's go do something it's not it's well planned out in the first part of the program here, we've been talking about the days now of, um, I, I don't like to use the term, but it's probably appropriate, the new normal. Uh, it's a buzz term now that we mm -hmm. use um, as to how things are going to be going forward. We talked about the, the camps here of the health versus economic situation. The economic situation has been attempted to be addressed, whether it be personal through people unemployment or whether it be through business. But again, those wheels turn slow. Trying to get that many people through that uh, instantaneously became unemployed or businesses that instantaneously shut down say, to don't open tomorrow. That's about how fast this whole thing happened. And everybody's head spun around and said, excuse me? No, you're not going to open tomorrow. Well, what am I going to do with all this stuff that's open? Yeah, I mean, all of the things that that you would think about. But it's hard to get the the feds and the state say there's money available, but it's hard to get it. 
And a lot of the people you talked to in the city were saying that same thing. So you said we can develop our own fund to explain what you're talking about here. So, you know, there was there was stimulus there for everyone in the United States. That was I think it was twelve hundred dollars per person that was that was sent out. Most people have received that first one unless unless you didn't receive a refund over the last couple of years, then you'll be getting your check from the Fed. So there was something for them. Then there were a lot of businesses that took a uh, place for uh, and got the PPP. And that was very good. I, that was shockingly fast. How you could take a, what was it, $550 billion project from inception to putting it in place in two weeks is unbelievable, especially for government. The logistics is one thing, but here's the key. There's no money. <laughs> and we're deficit spending anyway. Right. So they're sending you money that doesn't exist, uh, in a sense. I mean, it, you can send all the money you want, but... Well, they're sending you money that doesn't exist. However, if they don't, if, if, if that would not have taken place, um, we would be in a depression by now. So, yes, it was debt spending. Um, but but the other, that that's the whole thing is when you look at these things, what's the other side of this? So many people uh, did get help. Many people here in Marshfield, businesses, did get help. But there's this group of people that didn't get help. And they were the ones that that uh, maybe they didn't have, um, they were smaller businesses. They didn't qualify for PPP for whatever reason um, that was there. And they didn't get any state or federal help. And I was hearing from more and more of them. And I started looking around. There's got to be a way that we can help these people. And I was thinking, what if, how could we do a grant? So I was doing a little bit of research on that. And then, um, it, actually, two weeks ago today, I called Josh Miller. I'll just tell you quickly how this this uh, uh, program went. I called him up and I says, we've got to do something for people. He says, you know, we were kind of looking into a grant situation. And, and he went into some things. I says, this is what I'm looking at. I want something, and I did a little more research, and I found that in Mozanie, they did something very similar to what we were doing, and then Stevens Point had something on the cusp as well. So we started to look at them. Well, I talked to Josh at about 9 o'clock in the morning. By 3.30 that afternoon, I was now on the phone with with Josh and Mackie and, and uh, Main Street and a couple of other folks, and we're going over how this would work. And at the time, I was looking for... $1,500, and I was thinking maybe we could take a funding source, which would be the Common Council's um, contingency fund that's already in there. So what I didn't want to happen is, we, yeah, we want to help businesses, but we don't want everybody's taxes to go up because of this. So we have to make sure that this funding source is going to be so neutral that it's not going to affect the taxpayer. I knew the EDB had, the Economic Development Board had, um, a large amount in their 205 fund, it's 1.186 million, and it's there for economic develop, development. It's just sitting there. So I thought, probably get that as well. But at least before the EDB meets, let's get something going. So that afternoon, Josh had, and I said, Josh, I do not want a lot of red tape with this. I do not want the typical government, let's take two years to figure something out. I want this done right away. And by four o'clock that afternoon, we had a one page application. That's it. And we'll give you up to the original one was up to a $1,500 grant to cover and you cover the um, uh, your mortgage rent or lease and your utilities. And we'll give you up to $1,500. As long, and the qualifying was you have to have a brick and mortar establishment in the city of Marshfield. And you could have not received any other benefits. It's that it's for those people that kind of were left out, if you will. And there was a pretty fair amount of them. So we continued to talk over the weekend. And on Monday, that Monday, I wanted it I wanted it legally vetted and financially vetted. So I talked with uh, Ron Allman, our, our uh, finance director, and we're okay there. The city's finances are good, and we'll be doing a, a presentation on that in the next council meeting. And it had to go through HAP to make sure that it was legal, because I wanted to make sure that when we got it to the council, that this has been vetted. It's a you know, the, the application is vetted. Everything is vetted. So took it there to council on that Tuesday night. The council was warm to it. Um, I was ready for it to be instituted 
then knowing, and it would take about a week to do to implement, and knowing that um, the EDB would be able to back this up. But let's just start with 1500 and get to 2000 So they opened up the meetings, and then uh, that Friday, so last Friday, the EDB had their meeting to go through this. And I was sat in or listened in on that meeting and um, virtually, social distancing. I was in my computer um, and um, listened in, to, and they were thrilled with the idea, raised the amount of the grant from 1500 to 2000 and agreed to put $100,000 from this 205 fund. This 205 funny fund is money that's sitting there from past investments that the EDB has made or loans that they made in the interest. So this this hundred thousand dollars is not going to affect taxpayers at all. So now you've got this great thing. Well, the, the they they approved that, and then it went to the council this week on Tuesday, uh, unanimous approval. So now the grant is up to two thousand dollars. With $100,000 available, the application period started Wednesday. I think it goes through Monday. So I believe monies will start to be dispersed next week. Um, I'm not certain of that. I, I believe that's what it is. I, I know the application period is up on Monday. And I spoke with Josh late yesterday, and there was already 50 applications for this. So I am thrilled that here again, Government listened to what the citizens were saying. We heard the businesses and we heard other people saying, you're seeing this with takeout food, right? Everybody's going to help the businesses. We're doing everything we can. I think the fact that the city jumped in and got behind this is tremendous. It wasn't necessarily your idea, but you made it happen in Correct. our city. Correct. And it was possible because the money you found and did the research and did the investigation as to where this impetus could come from. Absolutely. And EDB is not just for new business. A lot of times people will, with the cable company, they'll give new customers a big discount right. and the old customers are going, hey, what the heck about me? I've been here for a decade. And Correct. You're doing nothing for me. Correct. So the same thing here. Businesses are going, wait a minute, I don't just bring new business in. How about keeping us in business? Right. And that's the key thing about part of the, the the role as mayor is to this was an initiative that I was really passionate about and I really wanted to get through I'm th I'm thrilled with the common council's decision um, I listen and two of the council members are on the EDB and they were phenomenal at this it just goes to show that government can move fast government is efficient and we're efficient but we're also extraordinarily thorough uh, in this, we've looked at all angles, and it's already implemented. So, um, and and from what I understand, speaking to Josh, he says, you know, the 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 people that have called in, you know, he doesn't know. Again, I, as of yesterday, it was about fifty. Um, and some grants will be up to two thousand, some maybe a thousand or twelve hundred, fifteen hundred, whatever. Um, he said that the people were so appreciative that we were even thinking of it. It gave them hope. What better economic development do you have than to help an entrepreneur that is really, gosh, can I stay open? Can I not? Give them that little shot in the arm. Because when we do open up, those are going to be the businesses that are going to go back that are going to help with jobs and help out. So I, all in all, I think it was just a great, great thing. Final question. How long can we go like this? How many more times can we do this? What do you anticipate the wind is that you got your nose to the wind here as to how long we can, how many times do we have to? I mean, it was safer at home, shut down. Do you anticipate, I mean, they're calling off events here all the way through the summer, some of these big events. Uh, some people say that this may, you know, when the new normal may never be what it was. Uh, we're, we're stopping the bleeding for now. The, the, what will determine that is how many citizens go to action. So, and, and going to action is not going on social media, complaining and getting into the arguments that you see on social media. That really serves no purpose. Everybody gets mad. And um, wouldn't it be nice if we could just be kind to each other and have a difference of opinion? But this is what's going to do it. Very, very simple is when people take action to call the governor's office or send emails and to understand that for every one person that wants to open up there's one person that's scared to death 
And I think both people have the right to be heard. And the people that want to open up, their opinions should be valued. And the people that are too scared, their opinions should be valued. But in order to get back to where we can open up, there's one action everybody can take. That's to call the governor's office. Calling anybody else isn't going to do, isn't going to be helpful. You know, if you, um, if you need meat, call Hewitt's. Don't call Walgreens and ask what Hewitt has, and then get in a, an argument with the people at Walgreens because they don't know what Hewitt's has. That's an analogy that's very descriptive of this. Get to the right people so your voice can be heard. Well, what do we do when the second round of flu hits in the fall? And now we're back to, you know, the businesses have to think about what's going to happen again when the second blow comes. Correct. Because there's a very good possibility here that we're not going to get everybody inoculated before that happens. So, I mean, the money is going to run out at some point in time. Talking with Mayor Bob McManus here on today's Insight Program, you can too, 384-2191, 384-2191. How well can you keep people rounded up in the pen? The city has been looking at that. We'll talk about it in a moment. It's time for some straight talk from Straight Talk Wireless. Look, if your wireless bill is growing out of control like some crazy, obnoxious weed, time to take some clippers to it. Cut that bill in half with Straight Talk Wireless. For just 45 bucks a month, you can get 25 gigs of high-speed data for half the cost of big carriers, all on America's largest and most dependable networks. No contracts, no mystery fees, ever. Straight Talk Wireless. No contract, no compromise. Savings may vary. See straighttalk.com. Liberty Mutual Insurance Company helps you customize your home insurance so you only pay for what you need. Unlike things you paid for you didn't need, like that much-needed 125-inch flat-screen TV. It's hurting my eyes a lot. For your 100-square-foot bedroom. My neck isn't so much stiff as it's completely stuck. With Liberty Mutual, get customized home insurance so you only pay for what you need. Uh-oh, I'm seeing color splotches. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Only pay for what you need at LibertyMutual.com. AM 1450 WDLB's Inside Program for the 1st of May. You know that if you're live listening on radio. You could be watching us, though, here on Marshfield Media Access, which will air throughout the month on Channel 989 on your Spectrum Digital tier of cable. So I want to say that because some of the facts and figures we gave in the last segment uh, may or may not be exact. Uh, you know if you're watching us in re uh, how this all turned out before we have the opportunity as we're t- discussing it now and with this uh, situation of coronavirus uh, changing it from day to day, uh, who knows how it's all going to play out. Correct. Uh, when we went to break, though, I was mentioning that uh, we're trying to keep people within an area. The people up north aren't all that uh, interested in uh, staying close by. Um before we go there, though, I'm afraid I'm going to have to go to a phone call here. Joanne, go ahead. You're on the air. Try that again. Okay, Joanne, go ahead. You're on the air. Well, that sounded right. All right, let's try that. Go ahead. Strike three here. Joanne, go ahead. You're on the air. Yes, I just have one question for the mayor. When do the beauty shops open up? I have to have a haircut bad. <laughs> I know, Joanne. Last month, and I got to tell you, I I called Governor Evers for you and said, "Have you heard about?" Jo- <laughs> oh yes, I'm sure of that. <laughs> He'll say she's not the only one. <laughs> right. right, I'm hopeful that it opens soon. I do too. It, it's a shaggy yeah, tail here. I'm month? thinking the same thing. <laughs> oh, the end of this month, I hope. <laughs> well, that that's you know the safer in home order is there through uh, May 26th, and there's a court. Um, case going on right now because that the, there's um, is it legal to go past May 11th? So we'll see what the Wisconsin Supreme Court says about that. Okay, thank you much. Thank right. you. Have a good, one. good luck with your hair. Congratulations on getting reelected. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> and it's one of those things where uh, now there's we're numerous chairs. There may only be one person allowed in the shop at a time. Right. That person have to be masked. Right. You know, I mean, all these things, that the business as we knew it. Um, I only got a minute here to get talking about something that's been discussed and was kind of a uh, hot potato here with the fact that employees 
of the city are being asked in their free time not to be traveling. Uh, did I get that right? The the uh, in the in the safer at home order, it says that people um, if they go out of their community, they may have to be quarantined, and so there was a policy made up about that, which I vehement, vehemently is you cannot tell an employee what to do on their off time, in my opinion. We still have the Constitution. So if somebody wants to go to their second home up in Manaqua, then they're going out of the community. Technically, they would have to, then they, under the Safer at Home rule, would have to report that to their employer. So if an employee wants to do that and feels that they might be contagious, then that's one thing. But to just arbitrarily throw out a blanket that's saying that if you do this, we're going to do that, that's just unconstitutional. So that 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 got sent back to HR to say, give this another look. There was a, the similar, the closest thing I can come to it was the smoking, where people who smoke off the job are then not eligible for health care within the company, or the company would say, we don't hire smokers. Uh, or if they did, then they found out later, and, you know, what's the constitutional right to... And this is just one more thing, that when the governor put the safer at home orders in place, they did not properly vet what they put in there, because they're actually asking every business and everything to do that, and it's, it's, that part is unconstitutional. You could still people, tell people to, to stay home, but they cannot be penalized at their job, and we can't tell people. What, because it, what we were trying to do is what the city policy was trying to do was say, if you go out of the community, well, what if you live 20 miles out of the community? Then you could never come back to work. That part there was completely unconstitutional. The council, uh, they were very clear. Yeah, we're not doing that. Go back to the book. And But that's part of our HR department did the right thing because they made a policy that the state has that the state doesn't even adhere to. That's how flawed this whole thing is. There's there's no brain power that got put into this, I'll guarantee you. <laughs> and you wonder why people don't trust government, a- right? Absolutely. I mean, it's uh, ready, shoot, aim. <laughs> but that's how fast this whole thing is moving. That I is. I mean, you need action. Yep. And to, to put the clamps on. All right, thank you for your time, and uh, we'll see how everything came out in another month here and how we're steering and where we're at at that point in time in the water. I hope you have a fun conversation then. All right. Mayor Bob McManus, my guest here on the 1st of May, as we are in the new month. As I say, I do the uh, window weather now from the inside looking out. So I know you can't experience it, but here's what's going to happen out there. Uh, Unless you go out and walk the dog or go to the park and stay away from everybody. So uh, we will talk again. You can watch this program on uh, Marshfield Media Access, channel 989 on your Spectrum Digital tier. It will play in rotation throughout the month. And again, I say these facts and figures that we gave may have already been changed by the time we uh, talk. So uh, take that in mind when you watch. I'm Jeff Cannon. Your hometown radio station, AM 1450 WDL.